I, I'm Sue Record. I'm the manager of the Hokeston Library in Newcastle County. I'm Sherry Scott. I work at the Georgetown Public Library, and like I said, that was my community rep. And I like what he's doing with this kindness corner because a lot of times, even though we have all these shelters, you can't get in that night. Whereas his kindness corner is kind of that transition to lead to a more long-term shelter. So. And code purple too. Code yeah, code purple. purple. I'm Heather Lembeck from Delmar Public Library, one of the ILE team members. Eric Crowell, I'm Eric Corpus member working with the, the Delaware Libraries. I'm Catherine Wimberly, I am with the Dover Public Library and an ILE team member. I am Beth Stevens and I work at the Newark Free Library and this is my team. And what's your team name? Team Delaware! Delaware! <laughs> 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 So today we're going to talk about our Delaware app. Uh, before we do that though, we wanted to give you some information about the Delaware community. Um, according to statistics published by the Homeless Planning Council of Delaware, between January 1st, 2014 and December 31st, 2014, there were over 2,000 uh, people who in Delaware who experienced an episode of homelessness. A point in time study found that 72% were in Newcastle, 16% uh, were in Kent County, 12% were in Sussex, 11% were veterans, 38.7% uh, had a disabling condition, 176 had a severe mental illness, 6.2% had some sort of substance abuse disorder, and 3.3% had HIV or AIDS. In Delaware, there's also problems uh, with um, income poverty. So 11.7% uh, of Delaware residents live below the poverty level. 12.9% uh, of Delaware residents experience some sort of food insecurity. Over 18,000 Delaware residents participate in WIC. 63,000 children are receiving food stamps. So our app could have focused on many areas, but we decided to focus on the five main ones for now. Uh, the first is housing, so not only would we list homeless shelters and things <coughs> of that sort, including information such as do they have any restrictions on age or gender, um, but also maybe to help people find low, low income housing when that time comes. Uh, then there's food, so not only would we help them find free meals, but also food pantries and other kind of state and government programs to help them get food. Then there's clothing. So not only places that have free clothes, but also low cost clothing, such as thrift stores or consignment shops. Then there's healthcare, and that would be for people that don't have insurance or a primary doctor that need healthcare, so they would go in and be able through the app to find someone that could treat them. Uh, and then the final one was finance. So not only to find maybe assistance with bill paying and things of that sort, but maybe once they get a job and are on their feet it, to help them learn how to manage their money and things of that sort. There's many questions about how an app can be used. And one of the most popular questions is, how can an app be used by the homeless when they don't usually have smartphones? And there's a couple answers to that. One <coughs> is it's not just for the homeless to use, but it's for other people to use to help the homeless. And that could be us as librarians, that could be social workers or anybody else. And one of the things we do plan on having is some type of an iPad in the library system with that app on it. So if somebody comes in asking for help in our library, we could take them to that. Um, to that site. Also, those of us, most of the librarians that have smartphones, we could bring it up on our phone or show it to other people. And it doesn't have to be in the library, it can be used anywhere. We could just be out and about and find somebody that needs some aid and we can just bring up our phone and <coughs> we got an app for them. Um, this can be used by anybody. Anybody that has the smartphone or the tablet that has apps, they can all use it and so it could be something that anybody will be able to download. Um, we need this app because even though there's a lot of resources of different things in Delaware, such as the 211 and all the other things, there is no resource that has everything all together in one place. 
And so this app puts all the things that we discussed, the five things plus more to be added later, it has it all in one spot. So we can bring it up and say, oh, okay, you need help in that area. Yeah, we know where to go for that. So it's something that is important because it's all together in one thing, and that does not exist yet in Delaware. To sustain our project, we uh, want to write a grant to provide an iPad for every library in the state of Delaware, and also maybe have some left over for some of the agencies that we're uh, showcasing on our resource list. Uh, we plan to publicize the app by speaking on Newcastle County Television, uh, radio, and local um, <coughs> local stations and through the normal library advertising mediums. We'd also like to invite the Ask a Librarian reference group to embrace our project and use it in addition to their own usual resources. And this project would be able to be uh, reproduced and duplicated in any state in the United States. Finally, partnerships are a great help in things like this. It's very uh, statewide, it's very multidimensional. That being the case, what we did is we partnered with a local app development company so that we could actually make sure that this is done right and done right the first time. So, that being the case, um, this is our app. Now, we're, we're Delaware. Delaware. How about you? <laughs>